Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today I'd like to take you on a tour of my side garden. This is a shade garden on the north side of our house. It's the first one I started developing when we moved into the garden and it is the one that I spend the most time looking at as I enjoy my coffee in the morning. Come with me and let's take a look in depth at all the plants on the north side shade garden. Here we are in mid-June of 2022, and I thought I would take a nice deep look at how this garden is doing. You've been with me as I've planted things, I've rearranged things, I've taken things out. This garden is still a work in progress, as every garden is, and, uh, but let's take a look at what it looks like today. Let's just go through this gate here. There we go. So just to orient yourself, we're here on the north side of the house. The house is right there. We have a nice little porch here that we enjoy our coffee and the dogs sit out with us. And, um, and so this area here where this flagstone pathway is, this is what I call the north side garden for obvious reasons. On the north, it's on the side. So let's just look at everything and see how it's going. It's really lush, it's really thick. There's a lot of places where you can't see mulch, which makes me happy. And uh, my plan for putting in a lot of varying textures of green is somewhat working. In some spaces, it's working better than other spaces. There are still some improvements I'd like to make, but let's take a look at what is here. So when you come in the gate, actually we have two gates. We have a five foot wide one so we can get equipment through and we have a three foot wide one that goes straight onto the porch. And the reason we have these two gates is because originally we had concrete here and here. And so the gates were put on where there was concrete pathways before. Then we had the stones put in. And so that explains that. So um, when you come in the gate, flanking each gate, there's a little container. These containers have green velvet boxwoods in them. They're very small. I got them as $10 plants last year. And um, so they're steadily growing. They did put on about two or three inches of new growth this year. And they're very soft. I like them a lot. I don't have them clipped very tightly. I like them the way they are right now. Over here on the front of the fence, I've got some Brunera. I don't know what variety this is. This was given to me by a friend. And it has some variegation on some of the leaves, and some of them are just plain green. Some of them are really large, as big as my hand. Others of them are quite a bit smaller. And it did flower with this beautiful purple flowers on it, but it's done now. And then over here, this is an upright plum yew that just suffers. It doesn't get much light, doesn't get much water. It's been there for five or six years. And, you know, it's hanging in there. And, of course, wild violets everywhere. More Brunera across the way here. Um, so let's start over this way. I have one, uh, two, three, four Sun King Aurelias in this garden. And all of them are short. They're not growing. I think it's because they're competing for water with the trees that they're planted under. So I still have to put irrigation in this garden for the purpose of, of watering my Aurelias and my Hostas so that they can get more to full size, also my Astilbes. So I'm gonna be putting that in and I'm hoping that that will help these Aurelias get bigger. But I like the chartreuse colors of them that pop throughout the garden. Here's some more Brunera over here. I had some pink uh, forget-me-nots in this area before, but they're done. Daffodil foliage still dying back, so I haven't cut it yet. This is an astilbe called Sunny Boy. I planted it from bare root last year. It didn't flower last year, but now it is flowering, and I'm really happy. Look at that bright pink color. It's pretty. And then these are going to be blooming in the next day or two. I have a collection of hostas here. I don't know the name of this one. It's the biggest one. Um, huge leaves. 
Uh, this is a halcyon, the same as what's outside the gate. This is sum and substance. And I don't know the name of this one either. Black negligee actea, or spike, no, um, snake root. Yeah, snake root, black negligee. Dwarf Alberta spruce in a pot. And then we have some goat's beard here. This has been there for two years, I think. Uh, and this is the first year that it blossomed. We got these um, pretty tassely blossoms here. These were white and they've gone over now to seed. So I'm hoping it will reseed in this area and give us more. There's another one that didn't blossom this year. Also back in here, we have some ostrich fern. There's the spike nard, more ferns. And then back there, we've got some hellebores. And I don't know the varieties of those. Those were gifts. And we've got some common nandina. And then we'll go to the middle in just a second. This is a golden globe arborvitae right here. This is, I want to say I put that in in 2016. So it's about, what's that, six years old or so. Down here in front, I've got three plants full of, what did I say it was, leopard's bane. And this, the variety is Little Leo, and it put on a blossom for us. Hello, Little Leo. I'm going to give you a nickname of Leon so that you can, there's another one coming. Yay. Are these going to blossom? Let's look. I don't see any buds there. I don't see any there. So that's a happy surprise. I thought they'd already bloomed for the season, so that's good. This is Hakanakloa. I believe it's um, all gold. I'm not exactly sure. I have some white impatience popped throughout. I have some pig squeak or uh, Virginia. One, two, uh, there should be a third one. Three pieces of it struggling along. Um, this hosta here with the red stems on it, it's called Raspberry Sunday. We've got some sweet woodruff here and here. This is more Bruner, this volunteered. So just a nice little collection of shady, woodlandy kind of plants in there. Oh, and one purple um, coleus, just to bring some depth of color over here. All right, so that's the first third. I consider this garden is in three pieces, one here, one here, and one over there. So let's look at this piece. I've got a stepping stone pathway that goes back through here in front of that box and out right here. So this inside here is the middle third. This one is... Uh, backed by my planter box, Steed's Hollies, Hakanakloa, and uh, Berry Smoothie Heucheras. In front of that is a Minimavet uh, Hydrangea. Hasn't ever bloomed. This is its first year, full year in here, and it's uh, putting out beautiful, beautiful blooms. Look at that. So on the front, they're a light pink, and on the back, they're a dark pink, so the flowers look multi-dimensional and just really very interesting. Very pretty. Happy with that. Um, these uh, hostas here, there are three of them. One, two, three. Those are called frozen margarita. And then there are some more um, impatience. We have a lot of hellebores in this garden. These are large ones. These are the WOW collection from Brex.com. Um, so one of them's giant white. One of them is um, winter plum. And one of them is pink frost, I think. But I don't know which is which. And actually there are, I believe, four plants in here. So who knows? This, I think, is guacamole hosta. Is it? No. I don't know what hosta that is. It's a big one, though. That one back there is Blue Hawaii Hosta. This one back there that's blooming right now is uh, Elegans, so it could potentially get way bigger than that. Here we have some Carnival Watermelon Heucheras. 
They have been fading in color. They used to be a little bit brighter pink. Now they've gone a little bit, I would say, bronzy, beigey red. Um, but the backs of them are still that beautiful color. And they're currently putting out their blooms. This is a guacamole hosta, I know. I don't know what this variety of hosta is, but I like it. Um, here's my container that I recently showed you how I planted it up. This is a volunteer Japanese maple that my friend gave me out of her yard. And I trimmed it off right here and cut it back. And so now it's putting out some side branches and leafing out into a, bee and a, a bigger tree. So that's good news. And in the pot underneath it, I put some impatiens and this coleus. And off camera, I put in some creeping jenny just to match the other planters that I have. Down in front of it, I put more impatiens and another of the coleus. This is a heuchera that has just started blooming. I believe this one is palace purple. Either that or plum pudding. But the tops of the leaves look really dark green, almost brownish green. You could even say it's approaching black, but it's definitely green. But then the backs are these gorgeous burgundy, shiny red color. So pretty with red stems and the flowers. Stems are red with the pinkish and whitish colors on the flowers. Just so pretty. And I like it right next to these heucheras, whose names I forget. I'm very sorry but they have the veining that's burgundy on the green leaves. The backs of these leaves are basically plain green. Um, and they are just finishing flowering. Their flowers have already gone to seed, as you can see. Um, but they are very prolific flower stalks on this set of three plants there. This is a double blood root. My um, daughter-in-law's mom, Judy, gave me. And it's got beautiful leaves on it. I love the shape of these leaves. And the size is impressive as well. They bloom white, double flowers, low to the ground, early spring. And then back this way, um, we've got some astilbe. These are um, visions, pink and red visions astilbe. Uh, let's see what else. Let's just take a closer look at this planter box. I do have two tassel ferns, one on each side, but they're not really thriving, I would say. But the heucheras are doing nicely. Again, some of the older leaves have faded, but they are putting out newer, younger, brighter leaves as well. So I could trim these off and get a brighter color. And they also are blooming right now. At least one of them is. All right, let me come back out. All right, so that was the middle third of this side. And now on this third of the garden, we have um, in the front here, this is epimedium. This is pink champagne epimedium. And it was beautiful. I wanna get some more of this in my life. I'm gonna see if I can divide this up to spread it around a little bit more. I looked at the garden center where I had bought it and they didn't have any more. So maybe next spring they'll have it again. I don't know. Um, this is the same spirea that's out front in two big clumps out front. Uh, these are just small pieces of it and they're not really thriving here. So I'll probably take them out of here and put them somewhere else. I keep saying that. I haven't done it yet. Here's another hosta whose name I don't know and same there. I don't know that one. This one I think is Patriot or Minuteman, one or the other. I know it's one or the other. Patriot or Minuteman. Um, here's another of the coleus and it's been kind of engulfed by the plants around it so um, it hasn't really grown a ton. These are all uh, Rudbeckia, Goldsturm, Rudbeckia, Black Eyed Susans and they do flower here but not very prolifically despite what they look like. They, they look healthy now but when they start to flower it's sporadic and sparse so I would like to move these plants to a more sunny location. Back there somewhere is a winter gem boxwood. There's my um, Sun King, Aurelia, or also known as Spikenard. And here's the other one of them. This is the shortest one of all. 
poor little guy down here. There's another coleus in, back in there. And this hosta, I don't know its name either, but it's a pretty chartreuse color. There's a Henry's Garnet Sweet Spire. Um, I got questions last year about wasn't this too much shade for it, but no, it grew nicely and it blossomed all over it. So it seems to be happy in this location right under this tree. And then here are two more Nandinas, common Nandinas or Domestica. I have a house plant that's an asparagus fern on a plant stand there just to bring some height to this section of the garden. Here's my Harry Lauder's walking stick or my contorted hazel tree and I love it. I recently gave it a little bit of a cleanup down here. It had a lot of suckering going on so I've exposed its legs again. I trimmed up off the ground a couple of branches and I took off a branch from right here that was coming out into the walkway too far. But I love this plant and I'm eager to see how it continues to grow as a small tree in this garden. All right, so from this tree that way, I consider to be the patio garden, which I will cover in another tour. So let's turn this way and look here. This is, I've got several of these hostas that are, I believe, hosta lancifolia. They're very common. They're the first to emerge in my garden. They're the last to die off. And they fill in gaps of greenery where I need something green but didn't have anything. I had lots of these when we moved into the house. They were here. And so I use them as space fillers. So when you see this hosta lancifolia, please know that it's only there because I didn't have anything else to put in. So these are some Autumn Joy sedum that are doing well. This is a Sargent's uh, Juniper. I think it needs more light than it gets. It's very sparse here. Impatience, another of the hostas. Here are my oldest hellebores that I have in the garden and they're doing very well. Look how thick they are. They're each like two and a half to three feet across and just gorgeous. These readily volunteer. I can pull babies out from underneath them every year and I need to do that again this year. Japanese painted fern looking nice in there. More hellebores. This is a newer one. Uh, this is only two years old, I believe. This is great white, I think. Guacamole hosta. It probably needs more room than I'm giving it. I should probably thin out this bed a little bit to give everything a little bit more room. Um, this is a, an impressive weed of some kind. Get that out of there. Um, this is um, a stilby. I think it's called strawberry something, strawberry sundae, strawberry ice cream, something strawberry for this is stilby. And it's been here for three or four years and it has never bloomed. So I'm excited to see that it's got bloomscapes on it now. Another Sun King Aurelia on this side of the garden. Again, it doesn't get very tall, so I'm hoping to figure out why. Another of the hostas, another Japanese painted fern clump. This is a June hosta, and I really love this one. I love the blue outside and the green inside of it. This is more of that same astilbe right there. There's more of it here. At least I think it's the same variety. It might be a different variety. I'm not sure, but it's also going to bloom, so that's exciting. More painted fern, another coleus. This is a pulmonaria. This one is called moonshine. This is the only one that I've not killed yet. I did buy a new one that I haven't planted yet, so I'm hoping to have actually success with two. We'll see. Here are the container plants that I put together recently. They're starting to fill in. The creeping jenny is starting to creep and the hostas are blooming now and the coleus have started to grow and the, the impatiens are filling in as well. So I think that these have turned into a successful planter. I like the way they look. And now you can see why I added Creeping Jenny into this container, just to tie it together a little bit. All right, over here, here's another hosta whose name I don't know. Same thing here, I don't know the name of that one. Lancifolia, big placeholder hosta. This is some Brunera, I think this is Jack Frost. Pretty sure, not 100% sure, but pretty sure. This hosta, I don't 
remember its name either. Um, here's another green velvet boxwood. This is the same as what's in the planters by the gate. And I would like to move this Brunera clump away from it so that it can grow unimpeded. So that's a task. There's another hellebore. That one got flattened by, um, I think, a dog. Another hosta. This is another guacamole. This one doesn't get enough sun or water here, so it's not nearly as big as its cousin over there and over there. More brunera. More impatience. Another coleus here. More stilby. I don't know the names of this one either. Um, there's some more hellebore back there. Another June hosta. Another of the big hostas. And we're back to the beginning. So that's the side garden, the north side garden. I've been gardening in this space since the day we moved in. Literally, the day we moved in, I started pulling weeds. So this is my favorite spot in the garden right now because I enjoy my coffee here in the mornings. We enjoy cool evenings out here on the porch. And we just spend a lot of time here. And um, one of my kids was here recently and said that they thought that this garden was like a jungle because it was so full and lush and green. And I think that's a high compliment because that's what I was going for was something lush and full. And shades of green, if there's color other than green in here, it's white. And if there's color other than green and white, it's pink in this particular garden. That's another reason I want to get those Black Eyed Susans out of here. It doesn't match my color scheme. So what do you think of this garden? Got any suggestions for me um, or any questions? Put them in the comment section down below. Love to hear from you. I'm not going to put the plant names on the screen for this video because it takes a lot of time to do that and I want to get this video out to you. Um, but if you have any questions about any of the plants, please let me know. I'd be happy to try to answer them for you. Um, I hope you're having a great day in your garden. I hope your garden is feeling good to you and looking good and, and satisfying you for the work that you've put into it. I hope I'll see you again in another video real soon. And until then, take care, friends. Bye.